Hi, Dave Butler here. Today's video is an introduction to the Momentum Spine app. It's a cool app that we're using now in the clinic to scan people's backs and get an AI prediction of what their scoliosis curve is. It uses surface topography and it will help us to monitor remotely and in the clinic what is happening with scoliosis curves. So really cool technology. I recommend that you download this, this app to use to monitor your own scoliosis or a loved one. And it's, it's a great app to use to, to monitor for scoliosis curves, monitor their progression as well as predict the Cobb angle with them. As AI modeling gets better, it's just gonna get better and better. So this is a great, a great app to use. So in this video, we're gonna demonstrate how to do a scan with the Momentum Spine app. I have my wife doing the scan, and we have one of our patients, Addie, who is going to be the subject of the scan. And one thing that's interesting with this scan is Dion has never used the Momentum Spine app. So this is real world how the Momentum Spine app would, would look if you were using it for the first time without having any prior knowledge of the Momentum Spine app. So it's a pretty, pretty cool way of scanning the back, but there are some specific things that you'll want to do when you scan the back. So watch the video, look at the things that Dion does and the tips that we talk about. And then after we scan Addie's back, I'll come back and we'll talk about how we're using it in the clinic, the benefits of it, and also some tips on how to get the best results from it. So let's go into seeing how Dion uses the her phone to scan Addie's back. Addie here has been been gracious enough to let us use her back as a model for using the Momentum Spine app. So this is my wife, Dion. She's also going to help us out in scanning Addie's back. So a couple of things, feedback that I've had from patients is make sure you're in an area that has enough room to walk around the person. And with the Momentum Spine app, it's something that you're going to go around three times and you want enough space to, to actually move around. So we're going to go through and show you how to use the app, how to scan someone's back, and we'll talk through some tips and tricks to get the best scan. If we don't get a good scan, it fails and you have to do another one. So it's just best to do it well the first time so we don't have to do it again. So let's, uh, let's move to the app. So Dion is gonna open the app here. Okay, so we select Addy, and then it will describe a little bit about what you wanna have your hair up, as far as where your clothes should be, things like that, so that we get a good scan. And just follow the directions as far as this goes and be in a space where you can go around somebody. So then you click, okay, I'm ready. And then it will describe circle one, circle two, two and circle three. So circle one is at the shoulder level, circle two is at chest level, and circle three is at the, the, the waist level. So. We'll go ahead and go through this. Dion will hit confirm that she knows what she's doing. Okay. And Addie's ready. Straight down and just hold still. That's all you have to do. All right. And then it will walk you through if you're going too fast, if you need to go slower, if you need to be further away. So we complete the first circle at the shoulder level. And then we'll go down chest level for the second circle. And what the, the technology is doing at this point is it's creating a 3D map or image of the spine. So it needs to be able to see different areas of the back. One, one thing that I've been told needs to happen is you need to make sure you get the feet in this last circle. So this last circle is important because it uses the feet as a reference for where the person is. So let's see. It says keep moving. So check if your video looks okay. So we're supposed to play it. And we go around. You can move now. <laughs> <laughs> and I would assume it looks okay. One thing that I might 
have had Addie do, you're kind of looking down. I'd mm -hmm. probably have you Something just down. stand looking looking up, but that's okay. okay. Um, Pulls her hair up off her neck. Now. Yeah, I should be doing that. No, that's yeah. good. That's perfect. Okay. And then you say it looks okay. And then what happens after this is it has you do a bent over scan where you're bending forward, and that gets a look at the rotation of your back. Kind of like when you're in the pediatrician office and they have you bend forward, and they look to see if there's that rotation. And so that's what we're, what we're looking for. We're doing three circles again, so... Go ahead and instruct her on how to do this so one. So just bend over, kind of like you're doing a scoliosis check, arms out and hanging, and just hold that position. And I'll go around you three times again, just like before. Entire back wants me to slow back here. So one concern I have with this position is if you had back pain and we had you hang out like this for a while. It may not be the most comfortable position, but to get an accurate measurement of what your spine is and get a AI prediction of your scoliosis cob angle, uh, it needs the standing and the bent over position. So. Not really liking it. So it will tell you whether to move forward or back or... It's probably really close to her. Okay, I'm using the feet. All right. Yeah, if you had back pain being down there that long, Eddie, how would that, how would that feel? Not very good. It wouldn't feel very good. Okay, you stand up. Okay, so then we watch that one. Pausing it. Oh. And upload. So you can skip that, approve and upload, and then it uploads to the cloud, goes to Momentum Spine, and they put it in their AR, AI software, and it estimates where the what size the curve is. So done. Done. Okay. So overall, a good scan, a good good process. There were some some little uh, little. Uh, speed bumps in the road as Dion was doing the scan on Addy. But overall, I think it was, it was a great scan. So I think some key points, just to reiterate the key points, make sure that the area that you're in is big enough so that you can walk around the person, like leave about three feet around that person that you can walk around them because you're gonna need that space if it tells you to move forward or move back. Number two, make sure that the hair is up. Addie did a great job on pulling her hair up so that it can see the top of the spine and into the neck. It needs to be able to see those. Number three, make sure your pant line is down low enough so that it can see your lower back. In this video, we could have probably gone a little bit lower on Addie's back, uh, pulling that pant line down a little bit, but we will see what the AI modeling is able to see on, on the app. So it takes a few minutes for the data and the image to go to the Momentum Spine software, and then it creates a 3D image of the back. We can see here that Addie's image of her back is there, and we can manipulate it and look in three dimensions that she is, is there in three dimensions. So we can look at the spine. A couple of things I would probably do differently next time is ha not having her head forward. She was putting her head forward to keep her hair off of her neck. And I would also have her put her pant line down just a little lower so that we can see the lower part of the spine. But we can see that the, there's an AI predicted calm angle of five degrees, which is fairly low because Addie has a mild scoliosis and she also has a heel lift in that's correcting some of that. And we can see that, that everything's there. So that's cool. The, the scan that we did was, a, was successful and it was sent to the Momentum Spine app and came back with a, a great image that we can use. I'm not gonna go over a lot of information on how to interpret the data that comes with this because we get a fair amount of data from this app. That'll be in another video, but this hopefully will help you see what it looks like on the app and it's pretty cool. So 
Those are some of the tips to get a good scan. And also on that third circle with standing, make sure you're getting the feet in that circle because it needs those to make a, a model of the, the person. So if you're doing a scan and it says that the scan has failed, it's probably because one of those things isn't happening. And hopefully it, it works great and you get uh, a good AI prediction of your scoliosis curve. But if it doesn't, just regroup, do another scan, and uh, you, sh you should be just fine. So in the clinic, we're using surface topography as a way of scanning the back and monitoring for progression without the need for x-ray. Kids that have scoliosis get a, a lot of x-rays. And because of that, they have a higher risk of cancer because of the radiation exposure because of the x-rays. If we can limit the number of x-rays that we need to use to monitor their curve, this is hugely beneficial. The other things we're using it for in the clinic is some of our patients travel from a long ways to come and see us. And for us to monitor their curve remotely, they can do the scan at home. And so as they do this scan at home, we can monitor it remotely and check for signs that their curve might be getting worse or alert them to things that are happening or kick that to an x-ray if needed. So I, I think that the, the use of this Momentum Spine app is, uh, we're gonna be using it a lot. This has good usage and as we've been playing around with it, it's been user friendly from a provider side and a patient side. And I'm excited to use this with more of our patients. So we'll do more videos on what the topography scan looks like, what we're interpreting with that, and how we compare that to other topography scans and, and that kind of thing. So stay tuned. We'll do more on the Momentum Spine app. It's actually going to be a big piece of our, our uh, future with, with looking at scoliosis curves and monitoring scoliosis curves. So thanks for watching. Hopefully this was helpful. I want to thank Momentum Spine for really helping us to get into this app and use it. And if you want to learn more about the Momentum Spine app, I did a podcast episode with Evan Dementberg, who is one of the co-founders of Momentum Spine. And you can hear about how it came to be and more about what Momentum Spine is. I'll put a link for that down in the description. So check that out and watch for other videos where we describe more about Momentum Spine and we show how to use that as a provider and the benefits of that. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.